Hello and welcome to this second screencast in our Getting Started with Fireworks series. In today's screencast, available exclusively at Web Design Tools Plus, we'll be taking a look at the Fireworks Slice tool. Slicing effectively splits up a document into different areas, for example a web page which has many elements, logo, navigation, content. Each of these would have their own slice within a Fireworks document. Slicing cuts up a document into multiple pieces which act as individual files and can be exported just as that. Slicing not only allows you to export a section of a document, but allows you to optimise them for the web and create interactivity around them. We're going to be working in both for Photoshop and Fireworks today in that order to be able to really contrast the two tools. We're going to start off with Photoshop and show you the tool within there and then move on to Fireworks. So let's get started within Photoshop. So we're in Photoshop here. Um, it acts slightly differently than its Fireworks counterpart. Fireworks definitely comes up top. Why? Well, for one, slicing is a lot more important and obvious in Fireworks documents. For example, when you slice them, when you slice in Fireworks, the overlay is a lot more visible, rather than the fairly faint and hard to see outline in Photoshop. So, we have a document here. I'm just gonna maybe zoom it in a little bit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the slice tool. Um, in Photoshop, it'll be down in the tool set. It might be hidden under the crop menu, but it for me it's just here. Now on Photoshop and Fireworks, it's accessible via the K keyboard shortcut, so just tap K and you'll be able to access this tool. So let's just draw a slice. So there, we've drawn a slice around the logo. Now, as you can see, these guides have started to appear, with the brown line centering around our actual slice. Now this is all fine and well on a white background, but as the websites start to get more complex and with darker backgrounds uh, as such, this outline may become harder to see as opposed to the strong vibrant overlay in fireworks obviously you'll just see that in a little bit in a little bit also editing and exporting slices is a lot easier within fireworks with options such as naming and optimizing immediately appearing in a docked menu everything is a lot faster and easier to access in fireworks as this is such an important tool so we've got a web page here um, it's just a flat png in photoshop i'm just going to draw a few more slices Now there's no option to actually optimize this text as text, it has to stay as an image in Photoshop. Whereas in Fireworks you can optimize it actually as text. There, we've just drawn a few slices around some of our um, important areas. So now, if I want to export this, well, how would I go about that? Well, I can simply head to File and save for web and devices. This will bring up this big pop-up menu where I can actually um, you know, select slices and export them simply by selecting the slices that I want. I can hold shift in to select multiple slices and then save. Now this whole experience is a lot simpler within Fireworks even if you don't know that. More so to actually change something in a slices property. So for example we've got a slice here what happens if I wanted to change the slice's name to maybe navigation? Well, in Fireworks it's such simple, but in Photoshop I've got to right click, select edit slice options, then I can change my options, but I have no, I can't actually do anything to manipulate the slices at the same time. I have to actually keep reopening this menu. So now let's not spend too long in Photoshop, let's head over to Fireworks. So we're going to go over to Fireworks now. I'll just close off that. And there, we've got fireworks open. So you can see how cumbersome that can just be just to save one slice or edit just one. So we'll get started in fireworks now. We've got the exact same flat PNG that of the site that we just saw in file in Photoshop, sorry. So I'm just gonna draw a slice around the logo here. How would I go about that? Well, across in the tool set here and the web section, you can see I've got the same very similar slice tool. Select that. And I can simply draw a slice around the logo. As you can see, it's a very stark difference to Photoshop. Immediately, you can see that these really visible red lines have appeared, um, which shows the tabular layout if I was to export this as a web page. But the actual slice itself is shown in this green overlay. Very, very easy to see. Um, these little, the bunch of red lines just signify the table base layout, and the bright green one signifies my actual slice. Now, down at the bottom, there's a bunch of properties we can edit here. You can see all of these properties. 
Now, remember that I would have to actually go right-clicking and open up a completely separate menu to actually do all this within um, Photoshop. So, we can just rename the logo, um, rename the slice rather to logo. We can also change dimensions and um, position, and we can also change the type of slice, which we'll come to on just in a, mi in a minute. Optimize it, although we'll come on to that in just a minute. Link it, set alternative text, of course, and set a target window. So, um, I'm just going to actually export the slice. Now, how would I export the slice? Well, remember we have to go to that full file, save for web devices. It's a lot simpler and a lot faster in Fireworks. Just right-click and select Export Selected Slice. And I can just um, do that if I have multiple slices I want to export. I can just hit this, um, uncheck this, but I'm going to leave it on. So let's save that logo. And across in my folder, I can bring it across. And you can see my logo's just appeared here as a PNG. Pop it open. And there's my logo. The exact thing I've just sliced out of for Fireworks. It's very, very simple to do that. So let's have a look back at these types. Well, we've got three types. Foreground image, background image, and HTML. Foreground images are just what you'd expect. And exported just as that. Images. Background images act in a very, very similar way. Although we can um, select repeats attachments and positions too. If you're familiar with any CSS, these properties certainly won't be new to you. HTML is an interesting one though. If we were going to export this as a web page, we can transform a section, for example a text paragraph, into an HTML snippet for easy updating later on. So what we'll do is I'll just set that back to foreground image and we'll slice up this title here. So this is something that we probably want to use um, an H1 tag for. So I'm going to select HTML Hit edit. I'm just going to copy a bit of. Um, I'm just going to copy across an H1 tag with the same text. There. So it doesn't really see that much difference on the web page right now. But when we come to export it a little bit later on, you'll be able to actually see that HTML slice as HTML. At the moment, it's not going to end up exactly the same. But for speed and for the sake of this demonstration, we can just leave it as that. Obviously, you can customize it later on. Now, what about optimization? Well, let's head back to this logo. If we come over to the optimize panel here, which might you might have to show it within the window menu, um, but you can see we have different image types. Um, each of these image types has their own pros and cons, and I'll give you a brief overview of the three main ones you'd probably be working with. JPEG supports millions of colors, and but unfortunately some information is discarded in order to compress and reduce the file size. JPEGs are good for low file sizes, which are really important for the web, and of course, you can change the quality and stuff like that too. Now, the GIF um, supports a lower range of colors, um, only 256, but um, it too is good for lower file sizes. But like JPEGs, it's a lossless format, so it does discard some image information. PNG is always my favorite choice, um, simply because you can actually choose the kind of like color gambit that um, you want to include. We can choose how many bit um, color to include and select how many colors from 2 to 256. And we have other options like, as you can see here, adaptive and stuff. So for some more information on image types and usage in web design, um, we have an article on W um, on Web Design Tuts Plus. Just um, search for image usage in web design. So now Fireworks is a web-based design app. Um, sorry, web design based app. And as such, export slices in a very web optimized way, with JPEG seeing significant reduction in file size, even over exporting a JPEG in Photoshop. So, um, and that's pretty much because Fireworks is for the web, whereas Photoshop is more for print and design like that, where load times aren't really taken into consideration. Right, so um, I'm just going to draw a few more slices around. Obviously, what I um, end up having to do is put a lot of HTML in for example for this text here and for that navigation but just for speed I'm just gonna leave them as images very very simple to do so slicing can be utilized for several different scenarios you can export individual slices just as I showed by right clicking um, as images to use in the web design later on. Or you can split up a document to export it as HTML and CSS so you can easily edit it later. 
Now we can add a level of interactivity into the slices, such as rollover effects, via the use of some like JavaScript and stuff, but since this is just a very basic rundown of the tool, we won't go into much detail about that. So I'm just going to actually show you how to export it as an HTML, because it is Fireworks is mainly a prototyping tool, so um, obviously you might want to show an interactive um, version of this to a client. Now obviously I don't have many pages, but obviously you can build up multiple pages and export them all. So I'm going to go to File and Export, and in this same folder I'm just going to um, export it as HTML and Images, or it CSS and Images, I'm just going to leave it as that. Make sure I'm exporting all the slices because obviously we don't want, just want that logo and I'll just rename it to index so now if we come to actually open this up we can go to fireworks files here and open the index there and you can actually see we've got a final product there this is where we've took a flat PNG into a real interactive web page via the use of um, just the slice tool. Now, this HTML export is not meant to be a final product, but it's a great way of demonstrating a concept or an idea to, in an interactive prototype to a client. Now, we can build this up with hotspots and stuff, but it actually works here, and that title has been replaced with an H1 tag. So, for Web Design Tuts Plus, I hope you've enjoyed this screencast, and keep fireworking.